12 teams are in the starting blocks. It's the race to Old Trafford for the grand final in October. Rugby League is back. Yes, we're ready to do it all over again and we're here at this fabulous venue, the Manchester Museum of Science and Industry. And we're here not just to launch a men's game, we're here to launch the women's and the wheelchair too. Because rugby league is the most inclusive sport in the world. Yes, during the next hour we have some very special guests. We're going to hear from the new St Helens head coach, Paul Wellins. We're going to hear from the Man of Steel, Brodie Croft, who's just signed an eight-year contract. We're going to hear from a World Cup winner. But for the next hour, I'm going to be joined by Paul Sculthorpe, four-time grand final winner. Scully, how excited are you for the start of the new season? Well, very, Mark. I am uh, you know, can't wait for the, the season to start and I think being here today and, and seeing everybody makes it that, that bit more real as well. So, you know, roll on the, uh, the next couple of weeks. And we'll talk about St Helens in detail with you, but your old club, four years on the bounce, going for a, a magical five for the team to beat. They are the team to beat and I think, you know, you look at the, the squads, you know, the, the, the St Helens squad has not really changed, there's, there's nobody new come in, there's, there's nobody nobody left, the only difference is obviously is Paul Wellens, you know, there's a lot of responsibility on Paul but I know the man well and uh, I know he's, he's certainly up for the job so, yeah, excited to see how uh, our Saints do this year. Plenty of Saints chat coming up, it's been a brilliant launch here at the Manchester Museum of Science and Industry. All the coaches, all the players, all the media as well. But it has been a sad occasion as well because this week we lost Ian Laybourne, Press Association journalist for many, many years. Really decent bloke as well. Uh, Scully, he was an outstanding journalist, but a really nice fella. He was, you know, he was, a, he was an outstanding journalist and, 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 and more to the point, you know, a, a lovely man. You know, it's days like today where, you, you know, you're always in Ian's company and, you know, I've done numerous uh, interviews with him over the years and, you know, he, he knew the game inside out and it was such a shock, you know, to, to hear of his, his passing. So, you know, uh, thoughts with his, uh, his family and friends. He only just retired in December and I was at his, his retirement due and honestly, it feels like just two minutes ago, uh, we were all celebrating his retirement. Um, our thoughts go to his friends, family and colleagues, Ian Laybourne. Let's start with the champions, St. Helens. They are not here. They did join in the launch by Zoom. We heard from James Roby, who's going round again, and the new coach, Paul Wellens, as they prepare for their World Club Challenge against the Penrith Panthers. Well, well over as baptisms of fire go in head coach jobs, World Club Challenge away in Australia is probably right up there. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, you know, it's certainly a huge challenge for us as a club, and obviously myself uh, taking over here as head coach. But it's a challenge that we, you know, we're really looking forward to, and it's a challenge I think this playing group have earned through what they've achieved, not just uh, last year, but in, in the years previous. And they've missed out on a number of opportunities to to play in a World Club challenge with COVID and and different things. So to get this chance this year and get the chance to do it down under is great for the club, and and one that we're really looking forward to. You've obviously been part of this club for a long time. You've been with this group all the way through from when Justin took over and into Christian's period as well. So even though it is a big change in terms of you taking over as head coach, did it feel quite seamless? Yeah, it's been quite comfortable. Obviously, it's a different challenge being a head coach and you deal with a lot of different things that you probably wouldn't deal with being an assistant. But knowing the playing group and understanding the personalities within that playing group is certainly a, you know, a, a big help. Uh, you know, and having played alongside uh, a lot of these players that are now coach, we've, we, we've had a 
quite a close relationship for a number of years now so we can have those real open and honest conversations uh, which, which are needed to have which which are needed to have at times uh, so yeah it's different but one that you know I'm really really excited about and really enjoying this team's won four in a row but for obvious reasons there's only been one World Cup challenge in that time it would have been an injustice wouldn't it if this group hadn't had another crack at the Australian champions at some point yeah I, th I think so you know like, what they've achieved in, in, in terms of you know the, the Super League title in the last few years like, like you said no team has ever ever done what, they, what this group has has so you know in itself it would have been an injustice but to get that opportunity now it's something that I'm delighted for because the players deserve it and that's what's most important is that the, the, the playing group get what they deserve off the back of their efforts in, in the previous years. So we heard from Paul Wellens out in Australia preparing for the World Club Challenge right then your old teammate and a mate as well is Paul Wellens the right man? He is the right man 100 million percent the right man you know he's, he's served his apprenticeship he's worked under some fabulous coaches both at, at club and country and he deserves his, uh, his, his opportunity uh, very much looking forward to it and what a baptism, baptism of, uh, of fire you know your first game over in Australia against the, uh, the double NRL premiers and you obviously must approve of this promoting from within because yes. he lives and breathes a club well, yeah, like you do you know he, he is he is Mr St Helens you know he knows the, the club inside out um, but anyone who knows Paul, both as a player and as a coach, why would you want anybody else? You know, his, his man management, his, his, his people skills, you know, which are the, are the best traits of the best coaches. And as I say, he's, he's, he's earned his stripes. And, you know, I'm, I'm made up for well though because he's, he's such a, a, a knowledgeable person, but, you know, a great fella to boot as well. How much is the pressure? Because obviously St Helens have won it four years on the bounce. Uh, which is a record. Uh, Christian Wolf had done an outstanding job. Mm. Justin Holbrook before as well. How much pressure is there on Paul Wellington? And, and can a, he cope with it? He can, he can certainly cope with it. You know, and, and Paul won't be phased by that. He'll be looking at the processes about. You know, he's not in control of, of, of what people say about him. What he's in control of is his, his team, how they prepare. You know, and, and how they re respond. He's, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's, a, he's an ultimate winner. Um, and I say he's earned the right to, to be there. So, you know, really looking forward to, to seeing how he goes. There is obvious, obvious pressure because they have won four years in a row. And the only difference this year from, from last year is, is the head coach's role. Um, but, you know, he's got the respect of the, the players. His, his knowledge is second to none. Um, so, yeah, I, I think for me, Saints are favourite going into this. But, you know, th there's other teams to talk about as well. And, you know, Wigan have strengthened, Leeds have strengthened, Warrington have strengthened. So, you know, it's, I think we're, we're set for a, for a fabulous year. Yeah, St. Helens are two to one favourites to uh, win uh, the grand final. Um, just a word on someone you know very well as well. James Roby's decided to go around again. 37, I'm told. <laughs> Is he still going to be playing when he's 67? Oh, knowing James Roby, yeah. Um, what a what phenomenal career he's had and, and, and continues to have and that's the thing with, with James you know we, we all know about his, his presence within the dressing room and, and what kind of you know person he is but he's still doing the business on the field and, and that's the biggest thing I think he, he recognised that certainly the club recognised that in, in extending his, his contract and I think just having James in and around them players and you know we've see, we seen him on BT before talking about the younger players through the squad how much they'll develop for being in, in and around his presence, but he's, he's still doing the business as well. And you know, you look at 37, the amount of games that he's played. You know, he's in, he's in on offense. He, he's, he touches the ball more than anybody else, and he's still leading the tackle count. So, you know, he's not somebody who stood out on the wing who can get through games by not taking too much contact. He's in the mix week in, week out. He first made his debut in 2004. Let's hear from James Roby. I'm thankful I made, made the right decision, I think. So, yeah, all geared up for uh, from this one. Obviously, will be my last one, definitely, I think. Um, I've got a few too many kind of signs now, and I, I, I know myself, um, within myself, that, you know, what, what I'm about my body's capable of, and, and obviously mentally as well. But, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I, I want it to, obviously, be hopefully another successful year for us at St. Helens. And, um, yeah, really looking forward to it. Is the opportunity to make history and, and, and do a fifth in a row one of the things that made you think, no, I need to do this again? Definitely, yeah. I think um, obviously we're, we're enjoying a great period of, of success for the club at the moment, and 
um, you know, I've enjoyed being a part of that and I enjoyed being a part of the team and, and the kind of the culture and, and everything we've got going at, at St Helens at the moment. So it makes it that little bit more difficult to, to step away when it's going so well. Um, so yeah, I want to come, obviously be a part of it one more year and hopefully be a part of lifting a couple more trophies and um, you know, and that is obviously the ultimate aim to go five in a row. Big change at the top of course with, with Christian heading back to Australia, a uh, well coming in, obviously you'll know him very well. Is he approaching coaching the same way that he approached playing? Yeah, he's doing really well. He's obviously took to the role uh, fantastically. He's, he's been an assistant for a good number of years, I think seven years. So he understands what he's doing. He's, he knows what he's about. Um, and the thing with Paul Wellens is he, he cares about the club. And you can see that in the way he delivers his messages and the way he coaches us as a team. Um, and like you say, there's, there's a little bit of a challenge there in terms of he's been a teammate before he's been a coach, if you like, um, for a few of the lads. So, you know, it's a bit of a, a kind of a change in that respect, but he's touched the role fantastic. He's, he's, he's settled in, he looks really comfortable. He knows what he's doing, he knows what the game's about. And most importantly, he knows our culture better than anybody at St. Helens. So um, he's a driving force in that respect and I think he'll do really well. James Robbie, right, let's talk World Club Challenge. First of all, 2007 Brisbane Broncos, you were a man of a match and scored. Do you want to talk about that game first? <laughs> yeah, well, it was a, some, uh, some great memories in the, in the World Club Challenge. Obviously, we beat Brisbane in 2001 as well. I've been on the, the back end of a, a couple of good ridings as well, you know, for Melbourne and, uh, and Sydney Roosters as well. Always great games, you know, it's, it's, it's the British best against the Australian best. And, and for me, you know... Them, it's great them, to have it back, isn't it? it? It's, it's, of course it is, you know, it's, it's what people want to see. Australia v, v England is, is, you know, the pinnacle of the, of the game and, and this is the pin, pinnacle at, uh, at club level. And it's great, you know, to, to challenge yourself against, you know, the premiers of, of you know, what, what they say is the, is the best competition in the world. So, um, I'm really looking forward to the game. Really looking forward to the game. Is it one of your career highlights winning it? Yeah, definitely. You know, I think it, whenever you beat Australia, I've been lucky to, to do that at club level or at, at international level. Um, you know, and, and they do set the standard. So, I think, you know, Saints are in for a, for, for a, a, a tough game. You know, Penrith have been outstanding for, for a number of years and, and are the best team in the, in the NRL. Um, it'd be interesting to see the game, obviously, both, you know, being at the start of the season, you know, not much rugby played up until this game, um, and it, you know, just really, really looking forward to it. Um, what kind of preparation is a World Club Challenge for Saints? I've been out, obviously, in Australia for a couple of weeks. What kind of preparation is it for the start of a Super League season? Good yeah, or bad? Do you think it, it can? Yeah, because you want to, you want to obviously peak and, and be, be match fit, be match sharp for that World Club Challenge. But also, then it's a long season. You know, where you, you, other teams will be preparing for, for Super League. You know, that couple of weeks later, or certainly peaking throughout that year. Whereas Saints know that they've got to be at their best to beat to beat Penrith. Can um, they do it? So the focus is different. Yeah. We've done it, and, yeah. and we've gone on and, and won Super League. You know, the following year. Um, so certainly they can they can do it. It's all about the 80 minutes, and it's it's our best against their best. Right, this is going to be the most stupid question I'm going to ask in the next hour. <laughs> can Saints win the grand final again? They can, they can. Or, or, you know, undoubtedly they, they can. I think they're the, the best team. I think they're the strongest team. Um, and I think Paul Wellens is, is more than up for the, the job that he's, uh, that he's taken on this year. So for me, Saints are the favourites. Um, but I think it could be the toughest one yet. Well, there's 11 teams looking to stop them. We're still going to hear from Daryl Powell. We're going to hear from the Wigan coach, Matty Pete, as well. But let's start with the Wigan camp and hear from one of their star men. It's Jay Field. Yeah, obviously, I just want to try and, um, same as last year, I just want to try and play every game and be available for every game. And, um, yeah, hopefully my form can, can emulate this year. And silverware last season, I guess that's whet the appetite for everyone at Wigan to go on and win more. Yeah, um, I think obviously every team sets out to win those sorts of things. You want to be in those finals, Challenge Cup finals and at Old Trafford. So, yeah, hopefully we can um, go one better this year. And obviously you, you, you managed to dovetail with Bevan French in that team last year. You must be must be really excited to be a part of the back line that straight across has got just so much strike for it. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah, we had a lot of joy last year and I think we both said we enjoyed playing with each other and we've got a few new additions in there this year in the centres as well. So... Yeah, hopefully we can all uh, click and score a few tries. You obviously made big progress last season on the Matty Pete. Do you feel that you're kind of continuing to make that progress in the off-season 
so that you can have a crack at the top of the league and things like grand finals? Uh, yeah, uh, obviously last year was no no coincidence and I think we've all said how much we enjoyed playing for Maddie and underneath him and uh, yeah, obviously, hopefully this year's uh, no different. Jay Field, and I'm delighted to say we're joined by Jay Field's boss, Matty Pete. Matty, thanks for joining us. Um, could we just touch on last season, first of all? Obviously, you got the trophy in the first year of charge, didn't you, with the Challenge Cup? We did, yeah, we did, and it was a great experience. A very unique win to Tottenham, and it felt fitting for the club, particularly in the, the club's 150th year anniversary. And the history the club's got with that trophy, I think it was a special one for us, uh, but the uh, the joy of that success doesn't last long and it's more the pain of the, the end of the season that, that I consider when I look back on last year, but you're right, you do see photos and it brings back fond memories. How gutted were you after that semi-final defeat then to Leeds? More gutted than I thought I was going to be, to be honest. Uh, I probably hadn't contemplated defeat that week and, uh, and that's no disrespect to Leeds, I think we was on a bit of a roll. We were undefeated at home and uh, it, it was a shock to the system and all credit to Leeds, they did a great job that evening uh, and you know, I wasn't ready for the season to end in that uh, I just wanted to carry on working with the group, nothing about the, uh, particularly about the grand final, we just was ready to keep working together and keep trying to improve as a team so yeah we were, we're determined, we're motivated and uh, but you know, last season didn't finish the way we wanted. But you must have felt, <clears throat> I mean, this was your first year in charge, you must have felt we're going in the right direction. Yeah, yeah, I think foundations were laid, I think that's the best way to put it. I think if, uh, if, I, if I'm honest, if someone would have offered me that at the beginning of the year as a start uh, for the group, and new staff in place, I think we'd have had to take it, uh, but it still doesn't make it uh, fun to finish that way. And uh, what I do know is the club as a whole, is going in the right direction on and off the field and it's about keep taking uh, steps forward but we can't take too long to get where we need to be. Uh, Scully, we saw a much improved Wigan last year, didn't we, under Matty? Yeah, very much. Better so. to watch I, as I well. Think, I think obviously Matty taking the, the job and a lot of the focus seemed to be on obviously building that culture and, and that environment at, at Wigan. I was at the semi-final win where you beat St Helens, obviously a massive win for you and then to go on and win the Challenge Cup in your, in your first year. You obviously see what St. Helens do, I know you Matty, you live and breathe Wigan Rugby League. How do Wigan go one better this year in Super League? What things have you pinpointed that can you can beat the best of St. Helens, the best of Leeds, the best of Warrington? Yeah, I think uh, I think there's technical things we can we can improve and tactical things. There's a few areas of the games that we can certainly tighten up. But I think on the whole, uh, the focus and the approach has to be having those big games in, the, in, in your mind the whole way through the season. So on reflection, there might have been times in the year where <clears throat> games were becoming comfortable, other teams were coming to the DW with lots of injuries and we weren't getting uh, that intense game week to week and, and potentially we let some of our standards slip and uh, we let the players uh, and the staff l lose a little bit of accountability, if, I, if I'm honest, yeah. and that can catch up on you, even if it's just one moment in a big game. So we've got to, uh, we've got to. The context of our of our performances has to be irrelevant. It's got to be about our standards, uh, the thing, the actions that, <coughs> pardon me, the actions that win big games, uh, and just being relentless with them. Is it making your job more difficult? What's going on at Saints? I mean, they're going for five, won four on the bounce. Is that making your job more difficult? No, no. Uh, it's irrelevant, really. Uh, it gets mentioned a lot. Uh, and I, and I do genuinely mean it when I say that it's the perfect time to be a Wigan coach. And I would hate to be a Wigan coach if Saints weren't weren't at least you know competing and right at the top. And uh, that's the benchmark. Uh, I don't shy away from the admiration I have from the way they've done it. I think uh, you've got to applaud the way that they've developed their own players. The uh, the players they don't get caught up in. Uh, their own success, I like the way they go about the business and there's a lot of things in there that when, when Wigan's at its best that we do as well so uh, yeah we want to beat them at their own game but yeah it's, it's a mutual respect I think. As a final question and going into obviously you're so associated with Wigan now but going into your <clears throat> second season as head coach what have you learnt? Oh, I've learnt so much, I've learnt so much. A lot of the, uh, the nitty-gritty really like coming to events like this 
managing my own time uh, with the extra expectations. I've learned that everyone in the building and everyone in the club wants, wants the best of me on a, on a daily basis, so I have to be prepared for that, make more time for people. Uh, I've learned that how you deal with players that aren't in the, in the team as well is, is important, which I knew before. Is that but one of the hardest bits of the job? Uh, it is, yeah. It's one, of the, it's one of the parts I take the most pride in, getting that right. Uh, name the team as early as we can, have those conversations, be as open and honest, and then help that, help that player during the week to get better at the areas that uh, he needs to. So, have, you found, have you found your, your job, your coaching philosophies as, as head coach of the first team have, have changed from, obviously we've known each other a long time, and you know, when you're head of youth or academy and, and very hard taskmaster, kind of obviously change away from that sort of coaching when you're dealing with the better players? Is yeah. it more about man management? Uh, I think the role, the role is demands a different kind of coach, I think what, is what you're saying, Scully. I think uh, when you're preparing someone to come through 16, 17, 18 to get ready for first team, you've got to shock them. You've got to uh, get them as hardened as you can, ready to go into an environment with a head coach like Michael Maguire or Sean Wayne, playing against blokes. So it's got to be... Uh, it's almost like entering the army and getting ready for, for a war, to be honest. So there's that. I think once a player comes into the first team environment, they're ready, they've been through that school and uh, you can you can treat them a little bit different. Uh, Which do you prefer? I, I prefer, no, I think I can be more myself now. I yeah. think before I was preparing someone else's, preparing players for someone else's regime where now ultimately I, I set the way we train, the way we play. Uh, so I can, I've got more uh, ownership. Uh, that head of youth job and working in academy is such a demanding job. Uh, I feel like it's an underrated role, the expectation that's put on you 24-7 across all the different age groups. And I think uh, it was that job that prepared me best for head coach. Matty, thanks for your time. Thanks for what you've done at the launch as well. Good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you. Right, thanks we're going to cross the Pennines now and hear from Cruz Leeming. I just want to fly under the radar, get my job done this year. Uh, but I've got a lot of fire in my belly after what happened, like, like we mentioned. Um, there's a lot for me to go at this year um, and there's no more extra motivation that's needed for me to do it. Um, so yeah, I'd just like to fly under the radar, get my job done. But there's a lot of fire in my belly this year and hopefully I have a big season. Uh, it was obviously a massive roller coaster last season for you guys. but. You must take so much belief from the way that you finished the last three or four months of that year once Rowan came in. Yeah, I think Rowan's come in and been fantastic for us and bought into the way that Leeds Rhinos play. I feel like coaches have come in before with different philosophies, which is fine, um, but not probably captured the way that Leeds Rhinos are as a team and how they play. And for them to come in and try and do a, a style that suits Leeds Rhinos might not suit them as a coach and it'd be unfair for them to come in and try and do that. Whereas I think it runs through Rowan's blood, the way that he wants to play and train. He loves the trick shots, he loves throwing the ball around. Um, he loves this new, like refreshing um, spectacle of rugby. He doesn't just want to play and win, he wants to put on a spectacle for the fans. And I think that's what Leeds Rhinos have done um, for years and, that, and that's what they've been known for. So it's not like he's had to come in and all of his beliefs and the way he coaches to suit Leeds Rhinos, he just suits Leeds Rhinos. Cruz Leeming there. Well, I'm delighted to be joined by Cruz's boss, Rohan Smith. Rohan, thanks for uh, joining us. Uh, first of all, proper pre-season on the about this time. How's things? Yeah, it's been, been a good pre-season. Um, bit of a staggered start with the late finish in the middle of October. A bunch of our senior players needed some time off, but we, we started early, uh, early November with the, with the young kids and got them going and they sort of set the tone for the pre-season. It's been, been enjoyable, it's been tough. Um, We've challenged him in lots of different ways, but we feel him we're, we're in good condition um, to get the season started. Are you enjoying life at Leeds? Yeah, I love Leeds. Leeds is a great city and um, you know, great, great club to work for, great people um, that run the club and yeah, just fortunate enough to be part of it. And Scully, let's embarrass him. Leeds were 11th when he took over. No chance of getting to a grand final. They finished fifth and managed to get themselves to a grand final. Yeah, it was a bit of an unbelievable uh, roller coaster for Ryan. I just said it there off, off camera as well. You know, week after week, you know, you, you never know what's going to happen. And do you find it a, a kind of different pressure this year going into 
you know, into a season on a level playing field with everybody else and a lot of expectancy on, on Leeds this year. Obviously from when you come in and, and took the job, you know, where Leeds were, the kind of you know, position that they were in at the time. Obviously now, you know, very much fancied for, for success this year. Yeah, that's it's a tough question that one because you know, I think growing growing up around coaching, um, you know, with my family being in the in the business and whatnot as well, like your your whole life, family life is based around winning, you know, and um, mum and dad were always happier when we were kids when you know, that dad had had a win on the weekend and I think I've kind of grown up like that that um, yeah, for my own my own family and the people around me, it's it's about winning. You know, I know the expectation of the club and the fans is is there as well. There's no hiding from that. But the pressure I sort of put on myself to to win um, is not really different. Being at Leeds or you know my last game before I came to Leeds was at playing against Ipswich, coaching North Devils in front of 300 people. Like that day, I was. I was into it, as into it, and it was as important to me as you know as as it was winning at Old Trafford. You know, so there's, there's a lot of the focus, obviously, what you know your day-to-day -day job, but just about obviously, you know, controlling the things that you can control about Leeds. You know, Matty Pete said it before. You know, we're not. It's a really irrelevant what other teams are doing or you know the success that they've had. You know, Saints winning it for for four years is irrelevant to to, to your clubs. You know, you're in control of what you do, and all the focus is how how leads come out. Yeah, yeah, talking about the sort of week to week mentality and just controlling what we can and um, it's it's not always the most exciting comments for, for the media, but that's that's just how it has to be. If we look too far in the in the distance we're gonna miss what, what's happening here right now and um, you know, I've got no idea what St Ellen's have been doing all pre-season, so they might have gone to another level that we don't even know yet. So Do you refer yeah. to any of the any other clubs of, of standards or Things that you've pinpointed that Leeds have got to be better at this year. Do you refer to, to to other teams or what are the things that you that you have highlighted that? Yeah, I think acknowledging what other teams are good at and then working out whether you should follow that because you have the right you know group or if it's something that you believe in. I think there's no problem. We all copy each other in yeah. some ways, um, but also I think in our game there's a lot of copycat sort of. Um, process around it, oh they're doing that, we better do that, but it doesn't always work like yeah, it's that. Gotta right for your, it's gotta be your right for your group and your beliefs and your you know, your culture. Um, but we yeah, we we certainly want to be more consistent with with what we what we want to do. Even at the back end of last year we had some pretty ordinary performances with possession, but we're trying to get that balance of moving the ball and using it but also being able to just roll our sleeves up and, and get dirty as well. So that's definitely one area we, we want to be stronger at. Um, you know, getting forward and being defensively strong, we showed at the back end of the season that we could do that, um, but probably taking that to another level is something we need to do as well. Yeah. Do you look back at last season in Pride, Dove, and when you took over, I mean, it was some big performances, that performance at Catalan, when you knocked them out, the semi-final at Wigan to knock them out, you got to the grand final, all right, you lost to Saints, but do you look back with some pride? Oh, certainly. I'm getting some goosebumps there just, just thinking of those moments. It's, um, you know, they're special. That's why you do, you know, that's why you're involved in sport to be able to risk big, but to, to win big. And, you know, we did that a couple of times, but on the big day, we, we didn't quite get there. And you, you've got to be willing to feel that pain as well to, to, to be able to, to be in the fight. You've got to be able to, you know, handle losing as well. So, um, yeah, a lot of pride and, and a bit of hurt too. Final question, Ed. What's success for Leeds this year then? <laughs> uh, success is, is there competing on the big days for, for the title. Um, you know, to do that, we've got to be good each week to, to give ourselves a chance of, of being there. Um, but there's no, yeah, no shying away from the fact we want to be there winning. Well, thanks for joining us. Best of luck for the season. Thanks for what you've done at the launch as well. It's greatly appreciated. And Pleasure. The best Thank of you. Love. Right, let's turn our attention to the team who Leeds knocked out last year. The Catland Dragons. Really excited for the, for the year ahead. You know, pre-season's a, a tough time for all players, and um, you know the focus is, is round one. So, yeah, excited. Now we're back in training. And in terms of what Catalans are, are aiming to achieve this year, you, you had that grand final appearance a couple of years ago. Of course, is that is that on the radar again? Yeah, silverware. Uh, the same as the same as every top team wants. It's it's silverware, and, and that's where we we want to put ourselves. You know, we've been been in the top four for the last few years now. Um, you know, with 
final appearances and, and semi-finals, but but still no silverware. So um, yeah, we want to go the next step. A, a few personnel changes over the off-season for Catalans. Are you feeling like this is a squad that has something special in it? Yeah, I think so. We've got a, a lot of talent. Last year, I feel like we undersold ourselves a little bit, um, and you know, there's been there's been some changes and some out and some in. But I think the the squad that we've got is well capable of going and doing some some good stuff this year. When you look at the competition as a whole, I think previously, you know, it's probably been seven or eight teams maybe that were trying to squeeze into that six. But this year, it feels like it's probably ten, maybe more teams that will all fancy your crack at the playoffs. Does that competitiveness help in some respect? Because obviously, you guys have to beat your best all the time. Yeah, I think the the more teams that we've got in the league that are capable of being right at the top um, is is better for everyone, better for the competition. Um, you become a better team and a better player playing against the best. So um, we want the standard to raise in Super League um, year on year, and, and hopefully this year it will. Lewis talking to uh, Sam Tonkins there. We'll talk about Catalans in a moment. You might have noticed we've been joined by a World Cup winner in James Simpson. We'll be talking about wheelchair rugby in a moment. And we've got the three trophies because we're not just launching a men's game. We are launching the women's game and the wheelchair game as well. And there's a brand new trophy for the wheelchair game. Um, James, thanks for joining us. Uh, first of all, you've decided to retire. Is that because you're too old? Far from it. No, I've, we were just saying, um, I need to be challenged. I was a soldier for 10 years. I've um, just finished playing for 10 years. And during those last few years of my career, I, I won the treble, I won the Challenge Cup, beat Catalan, first time it's been done. Won a World Cup at the end. So for me, it's retiring from playing on the biggest high I could really. And, and it's the best time I'd do it, moving to the coaching where I'm still really hungry for it, where there's fresh challenges. and. It's really exciting for me. I've been in the role a month and I'm already doing amazing things, talking at different wheelchair sports, speaking to other coaches for advice from them um, within wheelchair and the running game. So I'm treating it like I'm, I'm attacking it like I did in the army, like I did when I was playing. You know, it's, I'm, I'm not retired. I've just retired from playing. I'm still very much in rugby league. Uh, I follow you on Twitter. You're enjoying coaching, aren't you? I love it. Yeah, I love it. And, and you got a huge smile on your face. Yeah, I've, I've played a coach for two years, which was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be kind of coaching and playing um, but now coaching I've got the elite players the players who've played in World Cups the players who are going to be competing for trophies but just as importantly I've got the players now who are in the third week of playing wheelchair rugby league and, and can see them getting better every week and they're at the start of their journey where they could eventually go on to play internationally play in finals play in front of TV cameras and play for trophies so I'm, I've got both ends of the scale and I love it I love that challenge but I love the new players coming in as well and impacting them and hopefully they can go on the journey I did over that decade I played. i tell you what I want to know. When you wake up the morning after <laughs> becoming a world champion, what is it like waking up in the morning, opening your eyes and thinking, I'm a World Cup winner? I think it's the hangover hits you first. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I was going to say, did you wake up or did you go to sleep? <laughs> well, you got, we, I think we were still sat in the hotel reception about four or five in the morning and then a few hours kip and then we were down to Old Trafford. But, uh, I bought you a drink, if you can remember. Yeah, Old well, some of it's quite hazy. But yeah, no, it, yeah, it was fantastic. And it, 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 that dedication, that hard work and everything I did for 10 years, and I, I mean everything, the, the meals, the sacrifices, the training, it's... It makes it all worth it when you're there. And at that moment, we were on the pitch at Old Trafford with the kangaroos, with the jillaroos and us. And, and we were walking around the pitch and thousands of people there cheering and clapping. And it makes it all worth it. Everything, did every you, second worth it. Did you ever think that wheelchair rugby would get the response that it got within that, within that World Cup? It, no. was, it was amazing. It took the world by storm. And, you know, you, you see people tweeting, you know, celebrities about, you know, what they've seen and... You know, the respect for, for you guys. Yeah. Um, I've, we've been fortunate to see it up close and I think you, you're crazy. You're lunatic <laughs> to all of you. But, you know, the, the, the game was just, it was sensational, wasn't it? It's fantastic. It was fantastic. And I've been in the game long enough to go from the sports halls where there were six teams and no disabled bathrooms in some of these old sports halls to competing on these huge arenas fully designed for people in wheelchairs, for athletes in wheelchairs, with huge crowds screaming there. And you can't hear what, like, you know, like, you can't hear what's going on because what used to be an easy conversation is now got thousands of people behind you screaming. And it's amazing to see the game go from the shadows to these, the, we had more games televised last year than we've had. The, the players 
although they're all very humble, they deserve it after working so hard behind the scenes to finally get this level of recognition. And, and a lot of them won't say it, but they, they deserve this, this rewarded for their commitment and it's finally showing now on, on the, the level they're on. I, I was at that final and it was a privilege to be at that final. What was the atmosphere like being a player in that final? Because it was so loud in the Manchester Centre, wasn't it? We, all, we always knew it was going to be two or four points. Big game against France, it's two or four points either way. It's either an unconverted try or it's a penalty. And you saw in that last 15 minutes, it was penalty, kick for two. They get a penalty for kick for two. So the whole way, th the whole way through, we never panicked. We knew it was going to be a close game and we knew it would come down to those dying moments. So even that 77th minute where Tom goes in and scores, we knew we still had that in us. We knew it was going to come down to those last few minutes. And we were on the sideline and I, was on, I had my jumper on, you know, and Tom scored. We kick, two minutes left. So you start doing the maths, got six tackles set, just ride it out and finish it. And I started unzipping my, my jacket to like get on to like cheer. And I had Joe next to me and he went, zip your jacket back up. <laughs> it's like, don't jinx this. I was like, yeah, you're right. And I started zipping it back up just for that 30 second period. But the game was phenomenal. And that, that all the players spent an hour and a half, two hours afterwards, just engaging with the fans. And, and uh, yeah, it was absolutely amazing. It was such a turning point for this game. And let's just talk about domestic game very, very quickly. Um, you were in that Leeds team that lost out to Halifax, but you beat the Catalans to become Challenge Cup winners. First time Catalans had been beaten in since 2017, 2018, yeah. And uh, for us, it was a bit of a World Cup challenge. We wanted to prove that wheelchair rugby league, rugby league in England, English wheelchair rugby league, is a force to be reckoned with and, and the can't just come over here and take trophies off us. So, yeah, that was an absolutely amazing game. Um, probably the hardest I've ever played. I finished that and slept for like 36 hours but absolutely fantastic game and the, the challenge the, the grand final as well do you know live on tv huge another huge game do you know we got picked in the like we, we never thought we were going to lose do you know in the dying moments it, we, it was my, my first wheelchair game yeah and, i loved it and absolutely we, loved it we planned for an 80 minute game and we started going behind going behind but we knew we were going to have a comeback we knew we, we'd planned for this and then to in the last few minutes to to go down by four points against the team which had some of the best players from Halifax, some of the best players of Catalan in it as well. So to get pipped in the last dying moments, do you know, like, it, it, it was a, like, like, we didn't win, but we were so proud of the effort and I can't fault any of the players out there. So you've you played Simo for, for 10 years on, yeah. the, on the, the top level, now going into the coaching world. Yeah. What, what philosophies are you going to take from, from your career into your coaching career? Give me, give me, give me two things that are your yeah. main focus. The, the community. And, and the, the, the team and the ethos behind the games. And at Leeds, we lost every game we played for three years. The same group of players we've got now lost every game. And, but that built us into a winning team. And I feel like we have that, I want that in every single one of our players where we reward each other. We, when someone scores, we're all there high-fiving. We're helping each other. We're getting, and I really want that community to be there. And I feel that's really important. And it's something we're really proud of. And the new players coming in are doing that as well. And the second one is effort. You know yourself, big games aren't one on fancy plays, they're one on effort. And when you're against it and you need someone to do something, you need to dig deep, it's the effort. That looking after each other, that teamwork and camaraderie, and then the effort, and I feel like they go quite close together as well. James, best of luck with your coaching Thank career. You Don't much. go anywhere for a moment now. Just want to ask one question about the running game, Scully. We heard from Sam Tompkins there. Obviously, the Catalan Dragons got to the grand final and it was Leeds that knocked them out mm. of the competition this year. Feels like a big season for Catalan Dragons. Yeah, it does. It does. You know, they've, they've, the biggest challenge for Catalan every year is, is consistency, isn't it? You know, we, we know on their day they're capable, they're capable of beating anybody. They, they've proven that. Um, I think it's that consistency and, you know, they'll be disappointed to, to go out the way they did, you know, at the back end of, of last year. Um, but they've got a lot of talent in that in that side. You know, they've lost a couple of players, um, brought a few more players in. Obviously, lost the two big fellas to, to Warrington, Cassiano and, and Gil Dudson. Um, but a lot of a uh, lot of ability in that in that Catalan side, led by by that man, obviously the England captain Sam Tompkins. And the final question to you, James, it's about time that we launched the three games together, isn't it? The women's and the wheelchair. We did it in the World Cup. It's about time we did it for the Super League, isn't it? Being all together. Yeah, well, yeah, it's, it's, it's rugby league is because so you're much part bigger. of the rugby league family as anyone else. I think rugby league is the greatest sport out there, and I think it's so unique what we do: men's, women's, wheelchair, physical disability, um, learning disability, and it's such a unique thing that we should be proud of that, and we should push it out there and show these other sports. Look at what we're doing; we're doing it all together, one big brand of rugby league, and I think we should be really proud of it. 
rugby league is the most inclusive sport going. We're now going to turn our attention to Wakefield. They've got a new coach, they've also got some new signings. Let's hear from one of them. And new colours for you, you looking forward to getting stuck in? Yeah, I uh, can't wait uh, to start. Um, yeah, we've got a game coming up next week, so looking forward to that. What's pre-season been like so far? It's been pretty good. Um, just getting around the boys, the, you know, the new team for me, and yeah, just been getting to know everyone, um, learning all the new players and that. So, yeah, no, it's been good. It's been good so far. You're one of a, a fair few new faces at Wakefield. There's been a lot of change in the off-season. Does it feel like a positive place to be? Is everyone kind of ready to take on the task at hand? Yeah, everyone's been welcoming, um, especially yeah, to me and a few of the new boys. And um, yeah, we got a it's a new year and uh, new signings, and um, there's a good good young group uh, at Wakefield, and hopefully uh, we can take it out there or like sh showcase what we've been learning during the off season and can build you know, towards um, you know, top six come end of the season. Yeah, a lot of people will be wondering what to expect from Wakefield this year. Can you give us a little bit of insight as to the kind of things you've been working on and what we can expect from you? Uh, just, yeah, just to work hard, um, uh, play the full 80 minutes. Uh, training's been tough, so we've just been you know, getting that mentality right of uh, playing the full 80 minutes of, of rugby. And um, yeah, hopefully, yeah, once the season starts, you know, we can showcase what we've been going through. It's been an up and down couple of years for the club, but have you got that, that top six, those playoffs in your sight? Yeah, I think every club's got the top six in their sights, and um, yeah, and it's no different for us. Uh, you know, last year, Wakefield were towards the bottom end of that ladder there, and but yeah, we're hoping for a big year this year, and um, yeah, hopefully we can shock a few clubs and impress you know, our fans and, and everyone uh, in the City League. Well, that said, what would a successful year look like for Wakefield? I think um, yeah, successful uh, look would be yeah, just making it the playoffs uh, top six for us. Well, best of luck. Cheers, mate. Well, that's the view for me, Wakefield Trinity Camp. Scully, people are predicting a tough season for Wakefield. Yeah, uh, I think a lot of that is based on, on strength and depth. Um, obviously, great to see Mark Applegarth you know, get, the, uh, get the job. He's a good friend of mine, Mark, and a very, very, very good coach. Um, you know, made some shrewd signings. I think Kevin Proctor is one that, that stands out. You know, he'll be looking to, to lead the group. I think the question for, for Wakefield, we know they can compete. Um, you know, they, they've, they've pro proven it over the, you know, the past few years. Um, it's keeping injury free and, and, and trying to keep everybody healthy because they've, they've not got the biggest squad. Uh, Wakefield finished their uh, 10th last season. Two places above were Hull KR. And I was looking at the Hull KR squad. I mean, Jordan Abdul, Mikey Lewis, Lachlan Coop. It's a good squad, isn't it? They, they've got some fantastic players. And they finished players. eighth. Yeah. Um, which was disappointing from the season before. Yeah, yeah, from the season before. And, but you look at some of them players, you know, Mikey Lewis. Um, the good, young, up-and-coming, you know, players. And it's, uh, I, think that, I think they'll be... They'll have a good season. They made some good signings, um, you know, and, and build on the back of that. You know, the likes of Michael Lewis is, is that one year older, that one year more experienced, and I think he'll thrive this year. So we're going to hear from Tony Smith, the former Hull KR coach, in a moment. Of course, he's gone to Hull, but let's get the views from the KR camp. And like at this time of the time of the year, all the boys are just, um, you know, they can't wait for the games to come around. But you know, we've got some fresh faces, and um, there's a lot of enthusiasm and. You know, positivity around the camp, and um, you know we just can't wait to get out there and get cricketing. Yeah, a lot of change at Rovers coming into this season. You confident that it's all bedded in nicely, and you know you're ready to go? Yeah, I think you know we've made some great signings. Um, probably got a lot more depth this year, which is exciting. Um, you know, we had a lot of injuries last year, but you know I think we've got a lot more cover this year, and and the guys we brought in are, are quality. So, you know, they're adding a lot to the to the squad, and um, you know they're of high quality, and, and the training's been sound. So um, we're, we're looking forward to. You know, showing what they can do for us this year. And a, a new look for the coaching setup as well. Are you feel like you're adapting to what's being asked of you? Yeah, it's been tough actually. You know, it's a, a different approach with Willie coming from um, the NRL, but you know, the boys have taken to it really well. We've done a lot of hard work, and um, you know, I think we're in great shape. Um, yeah, pr pretty much like everyone this year. But like I said, we're we're adapting to new systems and, and a different style of play. And um, you know, I think it's going to work for us. So we're really excited. Um, you know, for the season ahead. Hey. You showed real glimpses of what you're capable of last season. You were 
obviously frustrated at times and without ended, but is consistency the key for you guys this year to just making sure you get into that six and see where you go from there? Yeah, I think so. You know, we need to um, you know give ourselves the best chance. I think we really need to start the season well, um, get a few wins early on the board, and you nailed it on the head. It's about being consistent throughout the year, and you know we we know we need to earn our place in the top six. It's not going to be easy, but. You know, I think, like I said, we're in a good place and, um, you know, we're ready to take the next level of, of where we're at as a club and, you know, that's, that's a further, further up the top end of the table. Well, that's the uh, view from Hull KR, but we're going to uh, jump across the city and that's what this man has done as well, Tony Smith. Um, Tony, why have you taken a job then? Because I was unemployed. <laughs> when you feed your family and pay mortgages and, yeah, I'm a professional coach, so opportunity arose. Um, I was out of work uh, from Hull KR. I finished, uh, it's the first time I've ever finished early, uh, finished the season early, meaning sacked. So uh, that in itself was something, you know, a bit different for me to having to handle. And um, I was looking around and uh, wasn't sure what the next job was going to be. So I was, yeah, it was a bit of a tough time, really. Uh, you never know if the, door, if the phone's going to ring or not, or somebody's going to knock on your door. And, um, so I uh, was out of work for a while and then Adam uh, approached me at the back end of the year, at last game of the year, and asked me would I have any interest and I bit his hand off because, uh, you know, it, it was a, a, a job that I've seen there before and uh, I think it's a big one. It's a big club, potentially a big club and, um, you know, there's a great support. Having lived in the city as well and still living in the city, I was in rented accommodation, it couldn't have worked out better. Hull have won Challenge Cups, obviously yep. runner-up in 2006. Do you feel like you're at the club of a sleeping giant? Well, that keeps being said. What I will tell you, having lived there, it's a huge club in terms of support. There's a lot of desire there. There's a lot of people who want it to be successful. The best way to explain it, if you walk down the street, if you drive down a street, if you jump on a bike, you, can't, you won't have to go far to see somebody wearing black and white. Seriously, it's, it's a well-supported club. There's a great desire for the club to do well, but it just hasn't, it's had bits and bobs, as you say. The Challenge Cup, they're not to be sneezed at, but I think there's a, there's a real strong desire for Hull to be up there, FC to be up there as one of the big four, you know, and I think, I think people from the outside probably expect that. Certainly people from the inside would like that to happen. That's a hard hard thing to do. It I must admit, time. Tony, I've always thought of, of Hull FC as, a, as, as one of them big clubs. You know, I've always thought a massive mm. underachiever from growing up as, yeah. you know, as a kid watching the game and, and the history of, of Hull FC. And as you say, you get them bits of Challenge Cup wins, you get that odd appearance in a, in a grand final, but never that consistency of, of success. Mm. Um, I think it's exciting times, and you said it on the stage, you know, that you know, people want to see both teams in, in Hull, you know, for the city, and certainly to compete with the, the football as well. Absolutely. Um, you know, a real strong, certainly, the, the, I mean, the Derby games are, are electric, you know, I've, I've been to quite a few of the Derby games at, at Magic Weekend as well, and you see the rivalry, it must be really, really exciting times, having been on the other side of the fence. It is, it is, but it isn't just the Derbys, you know, you know that's important, and it is, it's good to have Derbys within the, within the leagues, you know, and, and the argument about whether it's Saints Wigan is the biggest one, and it used to be when I first came Leeds Bradford is that the biggest one and uh, there is probably as much passion in the KR and FC one as I've seen anywhere but uh, which is healthy it's good but we need both teams in in that part of the world to be strong in rugby league it's always been a rugby league city mm -hmm. having lived there there's a lot of football too now yeah, yeah. you know when and I'm sort of I think that we've all got a responsibility to make you know, our area thrive, produce young players, produce good rugby league, attractive rugby league that young people want to aspire to become. That's, every club needs to do that. But I'm taking our area very seriously and it needs, we need to play a certain brand where people want to come and play for FC. Is that the biggest change that you'll implement? Is, is the brand of rugby? Is it? Some of is that. it off-field? Is it yeah, environment, culture? Yeah, all that. 
you know, I've got to adapt to what they've got there, and I've, you know, as well as work out what c I can enhance as well. Um, for sure, I love all that, the culture side mm. of things, and, and it's not just for the time that I'm there, it's for, hopefully, yeah. for years to come. And that's, you know, I'm going to say, that's what Saints have been so good at for so long, producing their own young players, having the right sort of culture, that's been going on for years. You know, I refer back to Daniel Anderson's time when I was at early doors mm. over here. He's had some influence right through yeah, that yeah. has kept going. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's how it should be, mm. you know, and even when a coach moves on, that, that culture continues to be strong, both in terms of performance but production line too. And it's important yeah. for all of us to leave that legacy. Final question, Tony. You've won grand finals. You know what it's all about. At the end of this season, what will make you smile? If we're respected and competed in each and every ma match, you know, and restored the pride in this in this badge, both where our our supporters and our our fans are proud of what we've done, um, that'll make me proudest. Uh, as as well as my players saying, "Hey, coach, you helped me get better." That's my job. My job is to help my players get better. If they get better, the byproduct of that is we might win some matches along the way, you know, and that builds confidence and people want to keep on improving. And you know, it's got to be enjoyable, also, you know. Along, I'm not going to be flogging them to death and hitting them with whips and driving them into being better. It, people have got to want to be better. They've got to want to get better and want to be strong and be at the top end of the competition when it gets tough and there's some sacrifices to make to get there. So we, we just want to restore the, the pride in our, our uh, badge. Well, Tony, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thanks so much for joining us. Good luck with Thank the new you. job. Right, we're Fantastic. going to turn our attention now to the Huddersfield Giants and have signed a very familiar face. I'm uh, very excited to, to come back to, to the Super League. Um, been away in Australia with, in a year f with the Sydney Roosters. So I think coming back the second time around, it's, it's good that it's not completely foreign to, to me, my wife and my daughter. Um, my wife um, was here with me the past couple of three years and my daughter was born here while I was doing my trade at St. Helens. So to come back um, in a different team, uh, just with new goals, new aspirations, uh, it's very exciting. The last time we saw you play on these shores, of course, was a, a grand final win, a Harry Sunderland Trophy win. But those fond memories must have played a part in you wanting to come back and have another go. Yeah, for sure. Uh, being in such a, a great team in, in St Helens and to accomplish the things that we did definitely made rugby league um, have a special, play to, a special place in my heart over here. And being at Old Trafford a few times, you know, there's nothing quite like it. And um, coming back here with a in a new team, there's there's goals that we want to set out to to achieve, and um, hopefully being in Old Trafford at the end of the year is one of them. You are joining the Huddersfield team that will be a, a different challenge, a team that's looking to establish itself back at the top of Super League and challenging for titles. Can your experience of winning things over here help? Uh, hopefully, that's what um, I, w I want to do is add value to this team, and um, with the experiences that I've had, I'm hoping to to share them with the team and, and add value in. Uh, um, achieving the, the goals they want to achieve and um, climbing up that ladder and uh, you know with Wigan and, and St Helens they've always been probably the two top teams of, of the competition and um, with our team in Huddersfield Giants we obviously want to challenge them and, and hopefully push for, for spots um, higher up the table. Uh, Scully, let's talk a bit about Huddersfield. You obviously know Kevin Agama from uh, St Helens brings loads of experience to Huddersfield. He does, you know, he brings a lot of experience both from the NRL and, and being successful at, at Saints. You know, he's a great, he's a, he's a great person, you know, what he'll bring to the, the group as well. And, you know, I think Huddersfield this year on the back of a, of a strong 2022, um, obviously Ian Watson's a couple of years into the job now, you know, really found his feet, found his, his, his signings he wants, made some big signings this year. Um, I think they're a, they're a team to watch. Uh, we were lucky in the Challenge Cup, it was late on, they lost that, but then in that eliminator against Salford, they didn't turn up, did they? No, they didn't, you know, and I think that's something that they'll learn from, is, is them, that big game experience, you know, I think Huddersfield will fancy themselves to be in and around, you know, the, the semi-finals and finals this year, and I, I'm sure it's certainly something that, that Ian, uh, Ian Watson's focused on, so I think you'll see a, a better Huddersfield through their experiences, but definitely disappointing last year, you know, how they, how they bowed out. 
Well, I'm delighted to be joined by another very, very special guest because, as we said early on, we're not just launching the Betfred Men's Super League, but we're launching the women's and the wheelchair as well. I'm delighted to be joined by Anna Davis from Wigan. Anna, thanks very much. No, Look, thank isn't it brilliant that we're launching the women's game and the wheelchair game as well? Yeah, it's, it's about time we did these together, yeah, isn't and it's it? It's absolutely fantastic. And like Caitlin said, it's um, that it's a full part of that journey, and this is one of those big steps in, in the right direction and yeah for us to be here it's, it's really exciting so thank you. So come on tell us about your journey because you didn't start in rugby league did no, you? You started in the other code. Well uh, but taking it even further back. I will now talk about back. the other code. Go on <laughs> then, tell us about to. your journey <laughs> to no, rugby league. even further back I did athletics um, for years and when I was 17 sustained a stress fracture in my foot so I had about five years off with different surgeries but hurdles in athletics was what I wanted to do but when the doctor said I was given the all clear to go again um, I must have been about 23 by then, I, I decided I'd take up Rugby Union because I was in Bath at the time and I had lots of friends who were playing for, for the club and I'd gotten into the sport as I'd gone to uni there. Um, so I played two years there, uh, got selected for GB Teachers Rugby League um, during that time via like Facebook posts but also my coach there was from Warrington so a massive Rugby League fan um, and after a couple of games with the teachers, the head coach at the time, John Wall, he was assistant coach at Wigan and he said, you can come up and, and, and play for us if you like. And I, to be honest, I didn't really know what he'd offered me. Um, but as I looked into it more and learned more of the history and, and also as I spoke to my coach uh, back in Bath, um, I realised kind of what an opportunity he, he'd offered me and, and that chance to play. Sort of, well, for me at the time, it was any kind of rugby at a higher level and, and push that professionalism I was excited for. But also as a back, like, I'd, I'd fallen in love with rugby league the first first game I played just because of the amount of work that you can come in and do and um, yeah just so you're pleased you made a switch yes they definitely so come on in what can Wigan do so obviously St Helens won the yeah. Challenge Cup last year Leeds mm. won the grand yeah, final so and York League leaders obviously yeah. so they've got this, that sort of top three and we were solidly fourth last year and so can you break that into back, that top three then yeah I think so and I think the exciting thing about Wigan is we've got a fantastic academy set up um, with uh, scholars attached to it now so we've got a good group of youngsters coming through who are a bit of an unknown quantity really so I think that kind of speed and athleticism and excitement that they bring will be maybe like our secret weapon I suppose next year so that for me as a player is the most exciting thing seeing these youngsters coming through and embedding themselves in that part of the team so looking forward to kind of getting our first run out and seeing what what we can offer. And we're here to launch for Super League but the Challenge Cup mm -hmm. final for women's is going to be at Wembley as well on the same day. Yeah which is that's yeah absolutely fantastic and what an occasion and excitement for the girls and a motivation to, to put the work and to be one of those teams who, who's in that final. And as a final question, we've obviously on the back of the, the World Cup and we had a brilliant final between New Zealand and Australia, unfortunately England going out in the semi-final. Do you feel like you're the beginning of something that's now growing and only going to get bigger and bigger? Yeah, definitely. And I think for me, as a slightly older player, maybe not to the game, but just, just in life, I think the excitement is laying that foundation hopefully for the girls coming through where professional contracts and things are probably going to be a real possibility for them so I think that's the excitement for me is seeing things changing slowly and coming and hopefully we do it in the right way we don't want to, to rush it and, and bring it in so quick that we can't cope but bring it in the right way and then setting that foundation for the younger players to come through and actually make a proper uh, career out of it. So. Well, Anna, thanks very oh, much thank for you. joining us. We're just going to go down the road slightly. They've got a new name. It's for Lee Leopards. They've got plenty of new sign-ins. Let's say from one of them is a familiar face in the Super League. It's Zach Hardacre. We've got quite a, a number of, of new lads that's been added to the squad from last year, and it's been um, it's been good. We've um, tried to do do as much as possible as a squad, as a team, um, to get to know each other and. Um, whether it's socials or you know training, we've 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 gave it a good crack, and you know the first four, five, six weeks of just before Christmas, we've um, we've done quite a lot of good stuff. Um, so yeah, obviously after Christmas we just trained this morning, a um, bit of conditioning to uh, get the Christmas pudding sweated off and, and stuff like that. But um, so far so good, mate. Yeah, it's uh, can't complain. Good. Lee, you know without doubt the most talked about team in this pre-season of the rebrand, the, you know, the change of the name and all of that kind of thing. But now that you're kind of back into pre-season and into the churn, if 
you like? Does it kind of feel like all of that's kind of been put to one side and you're just focusing on rugby league? Yeah, obviously. Um, there's quite a lot of talk about the rebranding and then the kits and stuff like that. Um, I know Derek's quite big on Twitter and he, he he's open to it. He really enjoys the, the back and forth. And, you know, the thing is, the more people speak about it, the better the better for, for Lee. Um, so on that pit, it's, it's been quite funny to just watching what's been going on. But obviously, us training, that's the, the tough bit. And uh, yeah, like I say, we've been training really hard and um, just getting on with with our training schedules and um, just, you know, getting to know each other, like I said earlier. And yeah, we're just looking forward to the season. It's going to be a, a tough one. Um, you know, Derek, b- being the owner, is really excited about the prospects of being back in Super League and he, want, he wants to stay there, wants the club to continue something for, not just for next year and two years. It, it's a long long pre, uh, long process for, for Derek, I think. I think he's said that in a few interviews. So, um, you know, us, us, us boys have just signed, you know, we're really keen to, to do what we can for for the club and, and for the team and um, see what you know this year brings. It's going to be exciting and you know we're all looking forward to it. So Lee's first game of the season is against Salford and I'm delighted to be joined by the man of steel, Brody Croft. Brody, first of all, huge news this week: an eight-year contract. How have you managed that? Yeah, manager got me a beauty. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, come up probably a couple of months ago. The first initial talks of it. Uh, and to be honest, I was, I was a bit off, caught off guard with it. I was like, oh, don't know about that. Like, but then once my manager started talking and I talked to my family and the stability that it provides, my family, my young family, got two kids now, two under two, um, partner there at home. And uh, yeah, it gives me a lot of confidence as well, knowing the club believe in me like this. Um, and, and I believe in the club in the direction that's going. I mean, everyone says that they like the direction the club's going, but I, I truly believe in this group that we have. It's a special group to be a part of. And, um, and, and yeah, I'm blessed that I can be signing a contract like this. Uh, we'll talk about Salford and the team and Paul in a moment, but let's just talk about being Man of Steel. How proud was that at the moment? Yeah, it was truly a humbling and I was I'm, uh, honored to, to receive a award like that. Uh, and then, to top it off as well, that, that night, my mum and dad were there as well. So I had my partner, Safina, and my mum and dad there, who just happened to be over from Australia at that time of year. Um, so to have them there and, and to receive a award like that, I mean, you don't play for, the, for accolades like that, but to get recognition like that uh, and to have my family there um, was truly special and, uh, yeah, something that I'm really proud of. And Scully, it was much deserved last year, wasn't it? It was very well deserved. You know, I had the pleasure of presenting Brody, you know, along with Lindsay Prescott, um, the award. And, you know, I had an outstanding season and, and truly well deserved. And, you know, I think you talk about the, the eight year contract for Brody, obviously, it's fantastic for him. And for Salford, who have, have been, you know, you've seen the transformation over, I think, the last three or four years, what Ian Bleas has done, you know, a great job there, along with Paul Rowley. I think for Super League as well to have, obviously, yourself signed up in, in Super League for the next eight years is, is massive for the game as a whole. Um, who's the only man to win the Man of Steel two years on the bounce, do you know? I'm not sure. <laughs> it's this gentleman, <laughs> Brody. Are, are you on the panel this year? I, I am, sorry, Paul. <laughs> sorry, mate. No, That's, uh, no points for uh, Brody Croft. <laughs> right, let's talk about Salford. You just seem to fit in straight away. Yeah, they just, they really welcomed me with open arms from day one. Um, I mean, we're not the biggest club, that's for sure, but I feel like we've got the biggest heart from the players to the coaches, the performance staff, the backroom staff. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's a joy to go to work every day there. Um, and and just, it's, a, it's a real good group of people to, to be around. Uh, so. I mean, I've copped a bit of stick the last couple of days once this announcement's come out, but I wouldn't want to have it People any other way. People borrow money off you. <laughs> yeah, apparently I'm mowing coffees for the next eight years or something like that. Uh, but unfortunately, you ended up missing the semi-final last year, didn't you? Yeah. And that... Salford took St Helens all the way. Yeah, it was gut-wrenching. Um, the Huddersfield game at halftime when I got told that I'd failed the HIA or they didn't even put me through it because of not what happened on the field. They just ruled me out then and there and from that, that moment I knew that that meant I couldn't play the next week um, and yeah I was shattered. My mum and dad in the sheds there with me and I just I remember bursting out tears I mean to come so far in the season that we had and to not get a chance to play in that game against Saints uh, killed me but in saying that 
I mean, our preparation all that week leading into the Saints was spot on. And from our coaching staff, the structure they put in place and the group of boys that we have, uh, I knew that we could still get the job done and I couldn't be more proud of the effort that the boys put in. Um, and yeah, to come so close hurt. Uh, but yeah, certainly it fuels the fire for this season. And Scully, obviously, St. Helens, could regard as lucky. I mean, Andy Akers went off as well, didn't he? After yeah, I mean, you're, you're losing two key players. Obviously, Brody not playing was, was a massive loss for Salford. And a lot of the responsibility then goes on to, to Andy Akers, obviously, from dummy half. To lose him, you know, two key indicators for the Salford team, but to still only, you know, run Saints so close, who were obviously a clear yeah. favourites going into that game. What's, what's been the, the focus, Brody, over, over pre season to, you know, to try and take Salford that, that one, one better? Certainly to build on what we did last year. Uh, but we've got to understand that we've got to start the journey. Everyone's starting from scratch again this season, so we've got to start our own journey. Uh, and defensively, every, t every team understands that defence is essentially what wins your comp, so you can tack all you want, but uh, if you're leaking points, uh, yeah, you're going to struggle in matches. So we've been working really hard on our defence, and so hopefully we can improve on that this year, um, and then hopefully our attack can keep flowing like it does, and um, we can do some big things. Final question, and what, what can Salford do this year, then? I mean, you'd be being silly. in a grand final, being in a Challenge Cup final, can I go of that? Yeah, next you'd be, level. You'd be silly not Is that why you've signed? Oh, well, I, I wouldn't have signed if I don't believe in this group and what we're capable of doing. So, uh, I mean, yeah, everyone's setting out from the start of the season to win silverware, and we're certainly no different. And uh, like I said, I've got the full belief in this group and the coaching staff and, and where this club's going that, yeah, we can do something special. Well, Brody, thanks so much. Thanks for joining us. Congratulations on the, the new contract as well, and good luck for the season. Thanks very much. All the best, Brody. Well, let's hear from a former Man of Steel. He's at the Castleford Tigers. It's their skipper, Paul McShane. Fair to say you'd have been disappointed, especially with how last season ended. Did that kind of leave a real hunger to get going again quickly and put things right? Yeah, very disappointing, especially after how hard we worked in season. You know, we, we got off to a slow start and... And then we kind of found some form and we give us any chance of making playoffs and falling short how we did. I know we had a, some key players missing, but I thought we had a, a great chance to get in there. That said, you must have felt last season you showed enough you know, glimpses of what you can do to be confident that you can progress this season and have a real crack. Yeah, 100%. And I think we've, we've added some, some real experience in there as well. So hopefully that can, can help us you know, in, in the bigger games and, and in the tighter games. And a you know, brand new season, a lot of the usual suspects in there. Lee coming in looked like probably the most competitive, newly promoted side for a long time. Must be expecting this to just be another really tough instalment of the Betfred Super League. Yeah, 100%. Lee signed well. I think Hull have signed great in the spine as well. You know, probably you can't take any game for granted. You've got to be at your best and hopefully we can, we can push to be a playoff side this year. Yeah, some changes to the team, Gareth Widdick coming into the spine being one of them. Uh, has that worked well for you as a combination nine into the house? Pardon? Uh, the spine, the way it's looking, Gareth oh, Widdick yeah. coming in, how's that working for you playing at nine? Yeah, I think, I think it'll definitely benefit my game. It's, you know, we, we've lost Truy, who, who were a great player for us, but um, for us now we've had a bit of experience and I think that's definitely going to benefit us and, you know, we've, with Milky, and Gaz, they've, they've played at a, a good standard for, for a long time. So, yeah, it should definitely make my job easier. Paul McShane there talking to Lewis. And, of course, Daryl Powell knows all about Paul McShane. But he's now the Warrington coach. We'll talk about Warrington in a moment. But a quick one, Scully. Castleford just missed out in the playoffs. They were a couple of minutes away, weren't they, against Leeds from actually getting in the playoffs. So, Lee Radford will be desperate to finish a top six this year. It certainly will be. As you say, you know, they had a, they had a strong finish to, to the back end of the, of the year. Probably overachieved in, in nearly making the, the playoffs. You know, they had an horrendous run throughout the year. I was talking to, to Maka before about, you know, the injuries that, that, that they, they suffered. You know, which it resulted in him playing most of, most of the season in the, in the halves. Um, so a big year for, for Cass and obviously some signed some experience this year in, uh, in Gareth Widdup and, uh, and, uh, and Milky from uh, Wakefield. Daryl, good to see you. How's pre-season been at Warrington? Yeah, it's been class, it's been tough as pre-seasons are. Focused a lot on defence th this year, you usually do, but I think we've tipped the scales a little bit more towards defence than, um, than we have done in, in, in the past. So yeah, excited, you got a lot of new recruits. Uh, a lot of experienced players uh, 
couple of Australian internationals that have um, been right at the top level. So yeah, we're excited, looking forward to it. You, you looked at your pack, haven't you, for the new signings? Yeah, the, you know, there's no secret really. I felt like the pack needed to be uh, to be changed a little bit. It needed uh, some some size in there. And uh, people like Sam Cassiano who actually ran over me in training the other week. So uh, that was interesting. Did um, it hurt? <laughs> and, uh, and and you know, Paul Vaughan, he's, he's a real big dude, lots of skills, uh, great defender. Uh, Gil Dudson, um, yeah, we've signed heavily in the pack. You know, Josh Maguire, obviously. So. We, uh, we feel like we've got a pack that can compete, that can get after teams, that can uh, look the opposition team in the eye and say, here we come. And that's, um, that's what we think we've got. You know, I mean, ultimately it's about what you do on the grass, isn't it? And we've got a big challenge ahead of us, we know that. It's about going week to week, starting with Leeds and, and getting after it. Have you done your debrief from last season? Have you moved on? Oh, you, you, you know, we burnt the burnt everything and kicked it out start to again. say and start again and everybody this today's asked me about 2022 and um i've never met anybody yet that can change history so it's it's pointless really it's about what we do now you know like i say we're just deluded to it recruited really well and it's about getting into the season and forgetting anything that's gone in the past because it can't help you um so 23 is a big year for for me personally for for the club for the uh, for a lot of individual players who have got a, a, a massive amount of motivation and ultimately that's what helps you to do things and the motivation to, to do special things for, for, for Warrington and um, yeah, looking forward to it, looking forward to the challenge. What was the, uh, what was the feedback on weekend's game? Obviously we were talking to you before the, the game. Yeah, tough game uh, and you know, I'd have to say Lee look like they'll be strong. I mean, obviously depth wise, um, not 100%, but in terms of their attitude, the players that they've got, the commitment to it, they, they bashed us early on and, you know, talking to our boys who we still saw yesterday, um, that was a tough game. It was a proper Super League game, that which is what, what we needed. We only had one prep game. So um, I wanted our middles to have big minutes. I didn't want to be rotating, and which Lee did a little bit. <laughs> for me, it was about big minutes for middles, get our combinations right, and then um, and then we look forward to thought, two weeks. Paul Vaughan looked good. Yeah, yeah, he's big, yeah, big, strong. He's big, big takes some hand. Yeah, yeah, his work rate is 22 carries for a middle. That's pretty impressive, you know. And he defends well. He moves well. Uh, he was he was great. Uh, Sam Cassiano picked up a little bit of an injury, but he had an impact on the game. You know his size and his physicality, his offloads. He pulls people in close to try line, difficult to deal with. I um, thought Josh Maguire was was really strong. You're looking at our, our new players, and Gill was. Gil was just, he does what he does, he's industrious, he gets around, he cleans up all the little bits and then he, he's broken his hand so he's going to be missing for a bit but for me I looked at it and thought well I thought we defended great, we're really aggressive, um, we made too many errors in the first half once we tidied that up in tough conditions I thought it was a, a really pleasing performance, loads to work on like there always is but um, yeah I, I was pleased with it. You think Josh Drinkwater will be a, a great addition for, for George as well? Yeah, I mean, George, George run 260 odd metres the other day, so, you know, George does what George does, then he's going to He's a runner, isn't he? You know, yeah. George's biggest strength is, great is, World is, Cup. is, is attacking, you yeah. know, he's attacking that line, and obviously somebody like Josh, who can pick up, you know, a lot of the directional stuff, and, and obviously got a great kicking game. Yeah. Um, can only benefit. Yeah, and, and half-back's all about balance, isn't it? Yeah. It's all about balance. You have two runners, it don't quite work. You have two organisers, don't quite work, so it's getting that balance right. And I think we've got that. Drink is a real good organiser, understands the game. Uh, he's embedded in it. He's a rugby head. You know, he, he absolutely loves it. Uh, and so he, he'll do all that for George that frees him up. But, but George has improved significantly. I mean, in, in terms of leadership, for example, he was the most voted for in our leadership group this year by his, his peers. So that always, you know, it tells you that he's growing as, a, as an individual who can organise as well as run. But I think the balance is good. Drinky organises a little bit more and George does what George does. And if he does that, then he takes some dealing with it. He was, he was great last week, I thought. Yeah. Final question for you, Daryl. Probably the toughest question as well. What is success for Warrington this year? Well, look, the, the one thing I want to shove up, or stop people singing, is it's always your year. You know what I mean? I want to give that to the fans. Um, look, I go into every year, and people always ask me this, what do you start out looking for at the start of every year? At Cass, I wanted to win everything. You know, that's that's the way I, I, I am. Um, the same when I was at Leeds years ago at Featherstone, uh, at, at Warrington. Look, I think we've got a team that's capable of winning things. Um, you want to be in in the shooting match for every competition. You know, that's, that's what Saints will be saying this year. 
they want to win everything. That's what they say. Why won't we say the same thing? You know, we want to be winners. That's what it's all about. And and that's what uh, that's what I'll be saying. I'm not going to go shouting from the rooftops about the ro rooftops about any of that. But I think we've got a team that's capable of winning things, and we have to get after that this year and prove what we're about. Daryl, thanks for joining us. Good Pleasure. luck for the season. Thank you. Do right, you know. our friends at the Sportsman will be streaming 20 games this year across the uh, Division One, uh, the Men's Challenge Cup, the Women's Challenge Cup, the wheelchair game as well. Plus, we'll have our weekly show, The Last Tackle. You're watching the Sportsman Rugby League. The home of Betfred Super League Online. Tune in to Last Tackle every Wednesday at 6 o'clock. So check out those live games and the weekly magazine show, The Last Tackle on The Sportsman. Right, it's been a great launch here at the Manchester Museum of Science and Industry. I'm delighted to welcome uh, to the show the Managing Director of Rugby League Commercial, Rodri Jones. Uh, Rodri, thanks for joining us. Do you know what? I've said this to a couple of guests. It's great we've been able to launch the men's, the women's and the wheelchair game today, isn't it? Oh, great. And I was just saying myself to someone earlier, this is actually one of my favourite days of the season. Everyone comes with optimism, hope, and just a, a longing for getting back onto the field. Um, and to be able to do it with three competitions this year for the first time is, is really special, off the back of the legacy of the World Cup. Um, and we've got so much to look forward to this year. And we won't bore people with the Super League and the RFL all coming back together, but a lot of work is going on behind the scenes, isn't it, to grow the game? Yeah, there's been a lot of work done in the last 12 months and there's a lot more work to come as well. Um, I guess the, the key point in that is the IMG relationship for the next 12 years. So this isn't you know, a, a short piece of work, this is a long-term piece of work and a long piece of strategy. Um, with, with roads leading into 2023 and 2024 as well. Um, so there's, there's plenty to be getting on with. Um, it, it's, uh, it's exciting though. And uh, you know, we can't wait for the season to start next Thursday. And who's gonna win the Betfred Men's Super League then? Oh, 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 you're not allowed to say. I can't, <laughs> no, I, I can't say. I, you know, I, I like going to matches, you know, wherever they are. I can't wait for Thursday night at Warrington. Lee will be totally different on Friday night and a sellout at Hull KR yeah. on Saturday and, you know, fingers crossed St Helens do the World Club Challenge on Saturday morning for us. I can ask him. Pointless question then. Who's going to win the men's Super League? I think Saints are favourite. <laughs> <laughs> it's unsurprisingly, that's why you teamed me up for that, Mark. But I just think it, it could be one of the closest years yet. And, and I agree with Rodri, you know, being here today and, and seeing everyone and, and the enthusiasm to, to get back out there. You know, there's been a lot of changes through in the playing rosters, you know, within Super League. Uh, and I think there's some real talking points. So really just looking forward to, to you know, to that, that first ball's kicked and, uh, and get the season underway. It's our seventh season here at Betfred, so not quite as long as a Brodie Croft contract yet. But uh, thanks to your team, great to work with. Been a brilliant launch. Thanks for joining us, Rodri. Scully, thanks for your company and you can be with us throughout the season as well. Brilliant certainly are right then please if you are going to have a bet on the rugby league keep it fun and gamble responsibly that is what we're all about so we're about to embark on a few months of fantastic rugby stay classy rugby league